Hey, everyone. It is Wednesday. We are on to our third session with Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? Great. Good, 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 good. So this is a question uh, kind of springing on you. And, you know, we've talked about getting ready for 2020. I remember that, you know, I remember talking in December, like, okay, what are your goals? What are my goals? And oh, by the way, folks, those videos are in Anna's playlist. So if you want to go back and watch them, you can. Uh, but now 2021 is going to be here in a heartbeat. Have you given any thought to it? Have you been able to look up and set goals or do any kind of preparing for 2021? You know, I'm in the middle of thinking through all of that while juggling a lot of things that I'm doing now to prepare myself for a better 2021. So I've sold quite a few units, um, properties that I knew I was going to have to put more money in over the next several years um, than what I could get out of them um, today. So it was like, okay, let's sell some things today to get liquid because I do think that real estate in certain areas is going to be cheaper next year than it is today. Yep. Um, and I want opportunity to replace some of my units with newer units that may or may not cash flow quite as well, but they're going to be less work, less headache, um, more stable units. So I'm, I've been really thinking about positioning myself to get liquid, figure out how to make tax moves to minimize the capital gain on all the things I've sold yeah. and then start to, to level up my portfolio for next year. Um, beyond that, I'm really just thinking about some of the things that I want to accomplish next year that I didn't accomplish this year um, and you know how I can create better habits to make sure that I get those things done and make them the priority that I said they were going to be this year but that COVID kind of threw a wrench in. Yeah. So when I look, when I hear you say that, and again, we've been talking for more than a year now, when I divide up your portfolio, and again, this is just my opinion, so I could be wrong. So first there's the, the Anna Kelly's family personal portfolio, right? What I hear you saying there is you're going to get simpler. You're going to upgrade quality. Yes. Um, it's it's going to become easier. I'll call it easier day-to-day -day management or month-to-month, -month, whatever you want to call it. Is that kind of a fair summary? Yes, and th that's a good point. This is my personal portfolio. So the portfolio that my husband and I own together, this year we, we hired a part-time property manager that works for us. Um, so that's taken a lot off of my own plate uh, because in the small market that I'm in, I don't have a lot of great property management choices. So I hired somebody. There you go. So by next year, it'll be, we're basically consolidating locations. So yep. where we had a bunch of staggered singles and four units, now we're like, okay, let's buy 10, 20 and 30 unit buildings and have fewer locations, newer kind of townhouse style properties and yep. nicer schools um, and just simplify you know, what we have in our personal holdings for yep. sure. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. And again, also upgrading quality. Yes. Okay. And then I look at your bigger portfolio, or I don't know, bigger, other portfolio right? Units, it's national. Um, in that portfolio, uh, what I really see you doing there is um, kind of diversification of locations. You seem to be going south. Um, again, B quality, right? Um, in, in A areas. Uh, what I see there is you're, you're, I don't know, I don't know if the right word's aggressive, but you're going to be evaluating lots of deals. And, you know, maybe they don't come to fruition in 2021, but you're going to be aggressive. And if we look out five years, that's probably going to be a big part of your portfolio five years from now. Is that fair? For sure. Yeah. And I, a lot of it is about diversification, diversification and scale. So um, one of the things that, you know, we've talked about and I've learned Michael to kind of go with the flow. Like I'm a planner and I, I've always had to have everything like, here's the plan. Here's the goal. This is what I'm doing. Check the boxes. Right. And I've been very successful doing that but I haven't given myself as much um, time to go, do I wanna pivot? I've done this. Do I really wanna keep going down this path or is there something about it that I think I could do differently or better or should I pivot? And so uh -huh. I'm giving myself the grace to try some things and see, do I like this as much as I thought I would? Is this really the highest and best use of my time? So while I'm going to areas that I believe are more resilient um, for investments like Atlanta suburbs, like you know, parts of Texas, um, also it allows me to um, spend my time more strategically and where I can get the biggest bang for my buck. So while the local properties that I own with my husband, 
you know, it's a lot of our time, even with a, a part-time property manager, it's still a lot of our time where when I can partner on a syndication with other people, you know, the, the, the parts are, are greater than, you know, the sum of the whole. And so essentially we can delegate certain things so that I can just do the pieces that I'm most passionate about and that I, that I like the most and where I can make the biggest bang for the amount of time that I put into those deals. So partnerships on a deal by deal basis is something that um, I'm enjoying. I thought I was going to grow a big company with a partner. And I realized, you know what, if, if what's most important to me is still most important to me, which is my family, I can't do that. Right. Could I? Yes. But am I willing to sacrifice the things that I need to, to do it? No, I'm not. And yeah. so I had to make myself pivot this year to go, okay, I thought I wanted to do this and that I could do it with balance. And I realized that I can't do it with balance um, and the balance of my family and, and my personal health and things I need to do needs to lean more strongly that way, yeah. reminding myself, I don't need the cash. I, I, I like more and I want more and I'm driven and determined, but I'm not going to do deals just to do deals. So I'm really going, is this going to be a great partnership and a great asset for myself and my investors that I'm going to enjoy? And it's not going to rob time from me living my personal life by design. Yep. If it is, I say yes. And if it isn't, I say no. And I'm no longer like, I got to do that deal because it's going to be a great deal and a yeah. great team and a great area, but it's going to cause me to have to take on the role where I'm like the primary operator. Yeah. Makes you know? total sense. Yeah. And then that brings me to the third piece. And this is a word I attach to you. If anybody were to ask me for one word on Anna, and that it is joy, right? That yeah, is, that is, you. that is something that I don't know if I would have said in 2000, late 2019, it was, we were still trying to figure it out, but you pivoted that. I think, I don't know when that was probably February. It just, it just became your word, your thing. It's kind of like your lens for all things. And one thing I see uh, you picking up is, is, I don't know what you want to call it, mentoring, training, enabling, whatever. But I think that's going to become a bigger part of who Anna is in the future, but maybe I'm reading that wrong, but I, I think that's where you gain joy. Yeah, I, I definitely love helping other people. And so, you know, being able to, to create the mentorship program and give it the time that I needed to and, and see people making, you know, progress toward their own goals has been definitely something that's definitely rewarding. Um, and, and I will continue to do. The other thing has just really been, like you said, it, it's going, I no longer have to grind because I have to. Yeah. I now longer, I now get to work because I want to. And yeah. so if it's something that's going to create joy for me and I'm going to enjoy doing it and it's going to be a blessing to my family and others, I'm all in, let's have fun. Yeah. But if it's something yeah. that's going to make me go, oh, why did I do this? I'm just going to say no. And so I'm giving myself the grace to say no to things that aren't the best things you know, saying no to good things to create space to do the things that I really am the most passionate and excited about. Yeah. And I think that's something people just need. I think, I think more of us need to sit back and really think about what brings joy. I mean, that's a simple three letter word, but it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Sit down, get quiet and really think about what brings you joy, you and your family joy. I think I think life gets better, but we just, we just don't sit down and do that. So I'm going to try to do that for my 2021 plans is, is sit. And again, I'll freely admit, I have never used the word joy on any of my, any of my things. Right. But I'm going to do that for 2021 is think about how joy could drive my 2021 goals. And I give you full credit for that subtle tweak. Thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah. that makes me excited. And I think that's part of it. When, when we can operate from that place, it becomes contagious. And then we see other people operating from a place of joy and going, wow, you know, I can do this. And yeah. so just being able to help other people um, in the midst of what you do and having been doing it, it's, it makes a huge difference in your day to day and how you feel and how you make decisions. You can make decisions for Joy Yeah, joy is a very, very powerful thing. Uh, I think we lost a little bit of the connection there, uh, but I think we caught all of that. Anna, I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you for your time. This has been a great show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.